Yes, yeah, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, first of all, I promise you I won't take up too much of, of your time. I'm, I'm honored to be here. Um, from what I can see, I'm probably the first foreigner on top of the stage here, so thank you for having me. Um, yeah, woohoo, foreigners. <laughs> thank, thanks for inviting me. Uh, I was told to stay on this spot, so I'm going to stay on this spot. Um, but I, I, I'm finding South Africa to be part of my, my new home. I've been coming back and forth here for about seven years in different roles from Europe. I'm from Philadelphia originally, from the U.S., uh, but I've been living here for a year, and I think uh, even though the news is kind of out that I've decided to leave Google, which people go, wow, leave Google, how, how could you leave Google? Um, but I'm not leaving South Africa, so I'm going to be here. You're going to have to kick me out to make, to make me leave. So uh, there's some new things on the horizon that uh, will be announced if you don't know already. But, okay, we're here to talk about, uh, I'm going to talk about Google, because I know you didn't come here about me. Um, and we're here to talk about the age of participation. I want to give a definition for participation. The condition of sharing in common with others as fellows or as partners. And the part that I want to talk about the most is sharing as fellows or partners. Uh, coming back to Google for a second, Google's uh, mission in the world is to take the world's information, make it universally accessible and uh, useful. So when you think about universally accessible, that means everybody, right? Arthur talked a bit earlier about making uh, universal accessibility for the internet. Uh, there was a gentleman, I forget his name, Ivan. Ivan spoke about uh, how Sweden, uh, the internet, is a right, not a privilege. I used to live in Stockholm for about a year, and, and it's right, everyone has broadband there. It's considered a right, you know? So universal accessibility. Now, participation, again, we talk about it has to be a, a ebb and a flow, a call and a response. People have to, when you participate, it's not a one-way thing. When you think about Google for a second, Google is a platform, and, and people you know, talk about uh, Google like it is the internet or we have the information. I have to tell you, like once a week, easily, I get an email from uh, an a, a MP or from a minister or from some famous person who says, there is something negative on Google about me, and I want you to take it off. And I go, wow, I, I, I wish I had that power to take it off. Uh, if you really look and see there's something negative about you on a site that you found on Google, I don't own the content. Google doesn't own it. You have to go call that person. And so you know, you have this thing. It's, 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 it's a, it's a, it has to be a two-way conversation for participation. Now, I want to give an example of uh, maybe when something is not participatory. So I'm sure everyone has had a conversation before where uh, we'll break it down on many levels. Maybe you're talking, maybe you're, uh, uh, you're interviewing someone and they're not very forthcoming with the information. So you're asking questions, they're giving one word responses. Hmm, no, right, no comment. I, I do the no comment a lot for Google. But you, you get the idea. It, th that's not participation, right? Or let's say you're a guy or you're a girl, you're interested in someone and you're, you're talking to him or to her and they're just not having it. Not, not participatory. You, you're, you're waxing melodic about your feelings, whatever it could be, and they're kind of coming back with staccato information, right? Not participatory. I think we've all experienced that before, right? So you agree to participate. You have to have a conversation. You have to have ebb and you have to have flow, right? You have to have call and response. Um, when we've had those time, types of experiences where they were not truly participatory or they're probably not our most memorable experiences, or at least they're not our most memorable positive experiences, right? Let's bring it onto the African continent for a second. We're looking at a population of approximately one billion uh, people in, on the continent of Africa, and that's in comparison to about six billion worldwide. So you think one-sixth of the population resides on this continent. I used to see these uh, billboards uh, beginning around June or July, I think it was MTN, when they are doing the whole Ayoba uh, campaign, and it would say, welcome to Africa when you leave OR Tambo, and it says, it's a very loud place. You, you, you ever see that one? There's, they show people with these fat flags on their face and their mouths wide open. So you think one billion uh, residents who, in a very loud place, there's probably a lot of participation that can go on, a lot of conversations that can be heard, right? So when you look at the one billion compared to six billion uh, uh, worldwide, and you look at out of that one billion, about half of that, 450 million, have mobile phone subscriptions. But we could probably argue that um, there's a lot more than that, because if you don't have a subscri subscription to a mobile phone, you probably have access. So let's call it two thirds of the population instead of one half of the population probably have access to mobile phones. 
Now, you know, we, we heard some other speakers talk about, uh, you know, access. And, and I, I do think that the majority of the people on the continent will access information, not via uh, computers, not, not via Kindles, as you said, but via, via the mobile phone. That's the most ubiquitous, uh, in fact, we're going to call it mobile device because, you know, a lot of people don't use it for phone. They use it for text and, and, and other types of things. The thing, though, is that the mobile penetration on the continent is six times, uh, six times more than the internet penetration. And that's why a lot of companies like Google are, are looking at, oh, let me step back for one second. So six times more, more, uh, more mobile uh, subscribers than internet subscribers. However, most of the people are using voice and text right now, right? Now, Google is looking at things like how do, you, how do we help people have participatory conversations but meeting them where they are. So let's say, for example, you don't have access to data or you don't have access to rich data, but you do have access to voice and you have access to text. So Google and other companies have started certain products that help you engage with the content out there in the world and also allow you to make your own content. So we have like the Google SMS package, which maybe some people may have heard of, maybe not, but I'll talk to you a bit about that. So the fact that uh, search is an interesting phenomenon. I, I have a... Um, I have two daughters. One of my daughters is here with me right now. My oldest, I also have a seven-year-old, which uh, made me start thinking about the age of participation. And uh, she had asked me a kind of a, I would say, a uh, controversial question. And I thought to myself, hmm, do I tell her the answer to this? And she saw the reluctance on my face, and her response was, if you don't want to tell me, I'll just go Google it. <laughs> so, wow, you, you're, you're right. I mean, you. you you're right, and, and it's true. And, and why I bring that up is because the idea of search is an idea that is a concept that kind of spans age groups, it spans socioeconomics. Uh, if you want to know something and you have the capacity to search for it, you know, in a privacy of your own room or wherever you may be, somewhere close to you, you'll do it. Uh, Google found this out when we did a project with the Grameen Foundation in Uganda and MTN, what we did was we started something called Google Search via SMS. So, okay, in order for you to engage with this, uh, this, this, the internet, with the information that's out there, you have to have the right kind of device. So why don't we bring it down to a device that you can use it on? So you don't have access to data, but you have access to SMS. So what we did with Grameen, we took uh, Grameen's database on health and, uh, and uh, agriculture, and we made it available to people, and we paid for this, the, the SMS uh, text for on MTN. So people in the rural areas of Uganda could send a text in and ask a question and receive an answer via text. So it's saying we're, we want to allow you to participate, but on a level that you can participate on, right? We also had this thing called Trader, which was quite interesting. So we talk about the idea of being consumers. We want to get information, but the thing that you want to do is be a consumer and a prosumer. So you want to create information as well. So what Google Trader allows you to do is say, well, I have this much grain to sell. And I know someone out there wants to buy this grain. I can text what I have onto this platform and allow a buyer to buy it. So we're looking at different types of things to say, how can we make, uh, how can we make participation a lot easier and bring it onto the level that for, for every, everyone to use? And it's not, not, just, not just Google. There are other companies doing this as well. You guys, I'm sure, know about M-Pesa in, in Kenya to bring banking to uh, the unbanked. So, the fact that you, uh, you don't have a bank account doesn't mean that you can't engage. Um, here at FNB, I mean, you can do things like go to a cash point and send money to someone on, on their mobile phone. There's a uh, program in Malawi where basically what they were doing is they were able to go into, into areas and uh, text information about children's health uh, so that they can see if there are any, any red flags, any problems. So we're looking at things that you can say, okay, right, maybe, uh, maybe you cannot participate on in the same richness, but how can we make it so that you can? Uh, that that kind of reminds me of something. I go to Ghana quite a bit, and uh, my, my kind of home village in Ghana is a place in the BA region called Ampuma, a little, little village. And I remember I was there when the mobile phone mass first went up. And if anyone's ever been in a little place that gets a mobile phone mass, the excitement is just incredible. It's like, oh, I don't have to go down to the town now to get online. I can actually take a phone call from here. But uh, one, of, one of my, my good friends there is a doctor, Dr. Sampson, and, and he, he's Ghanaian. And he, he, I, at the time, I had a, a, a HTC smartphone, you know, and on my phone doing some things. And he said to me, ah, Brother Stephen, excuse my, my accent, <laughs> ah, Brother Stephen, 
your phone, it tells you so much. My phone tells me nothing. And I thought, oh, right. So participation again. Here's this idea of, you know, we want to participate in the same things, but there's some things that we have to do first. So we have some challenges. Uh, so we talked about the majority of people who are using uh, mobile phones on the continent, at least, are only voice and SMS capable. So we had the first challenge of the actual unit itself. Now, I, I, I'm one, you know, when I first moved here, you had to get market research, and most of my research, Arthur, came, came probably from you, so thank you for that. You know, but, um, but, but I'm, I'm, I, I like to go do some hands-on stuff as well. And uh, I live uh, not too far from Lone Hill, so I get in the car and I drive the deep slip. I get out of the car, walk around. I can see there's mobile phones being sold on the road there. So I don't think access, the phone is the big problem. Um, my, my older daughter, when she first came, uh, I've been here for a few months before she came, she was looking at YouTube. And uh, you know, we, have, we, were using, um, we were using telecom, I'm pretty sure. And uh, we had a data, a data cap. She didn't know that. So she's looking at YouTube and she's watching her and my youngest daughter are just laughing at Doris takes a tumble and all these different things. And one day it just stops. And she says to me, the internet's broken. <laughs> and I think, wow, the, the internet's not broken. You reached your data bundle. And, and you think about, I mean, just, you know, someone not from here. You come here and you go, what? Data bundle? Yeah, you, you used all of your foreign uh, data that you can, and now you have no more until you buy some more. You're like, what the hell is, I don't understand that. That just doesn't make any sense at all, because in most other places, it's just, it just comes, you know? And I have this theory that um, you think about other types of technology that were new technologies, technologies like television, technologies like radio. Can you imagine pay-as-you-go radio? Can, <laughs> Can you imagine, can you imagine like you're listening to the radio and a radio stops and you have to go top it up somewhere? Or, or SABC just stops. You can't watch it anymore. So my, my theory, and maybe it's a bit radical, but it's my theory, is that uh, this is a new technology, just like television was a new technology, like radio was a new technology. There should be ways of making it free for everyone but making your money in other ways. There, there are ways. The question is who's going to do it? So, Okay, so data is, is, the, is, the other, is, is the next thing. So we have this one billion on the continent who have mobile phones that maybe, you know, the majority are SMS and voice enabled, but I, I think that's a problem that can be solved. The next big thing is the data itself, the, the, the price. You know, we have to come up with very innovative ways of making this participatory act of the internet available to people on these, these limited systems. But if we make the data available, I think people will get phones. I mean, I know that you can go somewhere like PEP or you can go to uh, the Foschini Group and you can get a phone on credit, you know? And, and if it's important enough to you, if it's your only access to the world that way, then you'll put it on credit. I mean, people will do that, right? So data's a big thing. I, I, do, I do take my hat off. I, I just heard recently, I, I don't know which network it was, so it's probably best I don't remember. But uh, what, they, what, what they basically were doing is one off flat rate uh, data plan fee. So you pay a daily rate and you get all you can eat for that day. But, but all I'm saying is that you can do a whole lot more. I mean, it, it, you really can do a whole lot more. We're gonna, it's like, I call this the era of how, do we, how much can we squeeze out of Iran? I mean, how, how, how much can we squeeze out of it? Because there's, there's really no reason why uh, internet access shouldn't be available for all. I mean, and, and I, I say that, that's Google's belief, but I think it's also, uh, the belief of people who know, people who have gone places and think, right, if my children are online doing things like presentations, my, my seven-year-old does PowerPoint. She uses Microsoft products as well. <laughs> she does PowerPoint presentations, and she goes online and grabs pictures, and the last one was about cakes. She, she wanted to show me all the different types of cakes, and I showed her how to do, uh, do animation on PowerPoint, and then the cake slides in, and the cup cupcakes, and fairy cakes, and and I think, okay, you know, she's seven, and uh, of course I think she's special, she's my, my, my daughter, but, um, but really, uh, any child that, if you put any child in front of a computer and you give them access to data, they'll figure it out. I don't care where they come from. So why should it be that a small percentage of the children get access to this? I mean, it should be on the government's, 
hope I'm not upsetting anyone, but it should be on the government's plan. I know that there are some basic things like health, uh, food, but when you allow people to have access to information to educate themselves, I think that some of those other problems will, 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 will eradicate over time. So, okay, I've talked about data. So we have the fact that we need to participate. We have to have this ebb and flow. We have to have a unit. I believe that unit is a mobile phone. We have to have the capacity or the, the data, you know, because they have a rich participation, uh, like some of the things you saw on, on the screen here about some of the things people are doing in the West. To have that type of, uh, of participation is hard to do on text. You know, so what Steve was showing was how we can try to replicate some things on text or in, in, a, in a lower, uh, media, lower, less rich media uh, context. But it's not the same. We're not speaking the same language. We're back to your phone tells you everything and my phone tells me nothing. Okay. So we need data. Next thing we need, uh, we, we need to have the, 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 the ebb and flow. We need to have the, the content. So I'm really happy to hear a lot of the speakers who are up here today talking about local content. Um, getting back to this idea of there is a, a billion voices on, on this continent. And this continent has uh, some very rich stories. And they may not all be written down. They may be oral. They, they, they may be musical. They may be, they may be in song and dance. They may be in, in many different formats. But there's lots of stories to be told. There's lots of, of content to allow others to participate in. Um, I think I'm the second person today to mention that there was a time where people talked about uh, Africa as the dark continent, right? And there's lots of questions why. Because skin's dark? I, I don't know. I think it's about the lack of knowledge of the continent. I am in the dark about the continent, right? But now we have this, this, this platform, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this, this ability to take information and share information. So my argument is, if we have the right device, again, which I think is the mobile, mobile device, if we have data, and then we have, uh, we have people actually creating content, which is a very important thing, not just to be consumers of content, not just to go on Google or Bing or Yahoo and access data, but how can I tell you about me? How can I tell you about my story? How can I tell you about my community, my issues? How can I have the call and response? If we have those things, then I would argue that uh, Africa won't be, so, won't be considered a dark continent because it's not dark. There's lots of enlightenment here, but you have to share it. And that's all that I have to say. Thank you very much.